There are more than 12,000 debris in the low orbits flying around. We were aware of the fact it was debris and uh, we were hoping we would have no impact. 4 October 1957 and the very first satellite Sputnik has just been launched. Nowadays, there are over 700 operational satellites orbiting above our heads, sending the signals for our phones, television, weather information and GPS. But there's a problem. Our current satellites are sharing space with the debris remaining from all of their predecessors, which, unlike Sputnik, haven't fallen back to Earth. So imagine this satellite, Eureka, that's behind me. Imagine it having a collision with another satellite about the same size provoking or giving a th thousands of new debris, each at least the size of a fist and more than one kilogram in weight, flying around the orbits and destroying other satellites. In 2009, the expected happened, and the American Iridium satellite collided with debris from an inactive Russian satellite. The result? 2,000 more pieces of debris and the destruction of a $55 million satellite. Something has to be done about uh, this problem. Collisions between satellite and debris are bound to happen. And as one collision multiplies the number of debris and can create up to 2,000 additional debris, there's going to be an avalanche effect and more and more satellites are going to be kicked out or destroyed in orbit. A higher risk of impact means higher insurance premiums. And the cost of insuring today's active satellites is around $20 billion. More importantly, aside from the material costs, Astronauts' lives are also at risk. We were aware of the existence of uh, debris when we were spacewalking. In a human spaceflight, we had really this ethic of not leaving anything in space, uh, except if we had to for safety reasons. The International Space Station has to frequently maneuver to avoid some 12,000 larger pieces of debris that are constantly monitored. These larger pieces of debris measure at least 10 centimeters wide, just like SwissCube. After the launch of SwissCube, the Space Center decided to create a program to develop technologies that would help us remove debris from space. The challenge for Clean Space One is to go up there and rendezvous with SwissCube and then grab it and then bring it down to enter the atmosphere. So the technology is to bring that small spacecraft and have the rendezvous are not technologies that you can find off the shelf. At EPFL, we're developing uh, micro and electric propulsion systems, um, so systems of propulsion that push ions. There are several other uh, technologies that will be needed because SwissCube was a 10 by 10 and Clean Space One won't be that much bigger. It's not a multi-million development, it's a university-based development. The second uh, main challenge will be having a deployment of a, either a robotic arm or a deployment of a mechanism that will embrace or grab exactly Swiss Cube. At EPFL and at the, the Swiss Space Center, we do have uh, quite a bit of heritage in, ter in terms of uh, bio-inspired robotics. So we will generate, we will create a new family of satellites, new technology that will allow us to go up to space, to identify our satellites, to grapple them, to deorbit them, and maybe even in the future to bring them back to Earth. We need to undertake something now, like exactly in the same way we need to undertake something about the global warming. In a way, there's some similarity between the two problems. If we don't do anything, we'll have big problems in the future.